Hey, this is uh, Black Home 7 here, and today I'll be going over the uh, Scrabble semifinals as I'm up against uh, Sammy of the uh, Geelong Torah Cats. And uh, let's get right into it. So, so my matchup against Sammy right now, I would argue, isn't the best. Like, he has a lot of, like, um, I would say, like, like middle of the road, like, mid tier Pokemon. Uh, but all those Pokemon have very strong versatile sets in terms of like setup. Like almost every one of his Pokemon can do some form of like, you know, setup or off or like or some form of offense. And in my opinion, he's I, this is gonna be one of those like, like type of blow for blow battles if you ask me. Like, he has Winsicott, Hydreigon, Aegislash, Salazzle, Sandaconda, like Necrozma. Togekiss, Mian Shao, Raikou, Blastoise, and Mega King. So, um, what really scares me about this battle is that, again, every one of these Pokemon can set up, or if it's set up, they set up, or just straight out just go for the offense. And, of course, like, I think the number one Pokemon that I need to get rid of, or, like, there's like, there's a few Pokemon that in my, that are, in my opinion are going to be really annoying to deal with. One of them is Winsicott, because again, this thing has, has so much set of coverage with Tailwind, Encore, like Endeavor if he wants to go that route. Um a Memento. He could even go for Subseed. Like if he, if, he, if he wants to. Or he could just spam like Stump Spore. Of course, like it also could be a U-turn log of knockoff, so a Dragon, Nasty Plot user, Specs user. Even choice is something I could anticipate. Um, I'm kind of worried about this thing being nasty blot because this could just blow past the team I have. But I, that's like one of those things I have to like accept that the, you know Hydreigon's just gonna punish hole, like punch a massive hole in my team. So then with Age Slash, um, Age Slash is by far the scariest mon in this battle because um, yeah, I got. Yeah, he did get nerfed, but then you, you realize they gave, like, Game Freak gave this thing close combat and and, and it still has Sword Stance, so, so yeah, I really don't want to deal with this. <laughs> something like, uh, like, something like this it was, like, probably the number one set I was kind of, like, concerned about. Also, maybe, like, a, a mixed set with, like, Flash Cannon, Shadow Ball, um, was annoying. Of course, you could see the, the classic, uh, Sub leftovers AG like that set alone is kind of annoying for my team to deal with, but not the end of the world. So then you have Salazzle, um, toxic, uh, sub toxic Salazzle could be really annoying. So I gotta be really, fig I gotta figure out exactly. Um, I gotta figure out exactly like like the set this thing's gonna run, because if it has a little black sludge, it'll probably be the sub toxic set. Um. Encore is also annoying. Again, like the fact this thing has a, a corrosion could just, you know, toxic something like Excadrill or Sully, even though why would you do that? But of course, again, sub toxic, just there to stall my team down. Sandaconda, of course, uh, this thing's a very interesting Pokemon. I don't think he brings it, but like, uh, it has Stealth Rocks, um, it has Coil, Glare. I think that's the best thing it could do. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna come down to what he brings in this guy, because I think uh, like between earthquake, high horsepower, and I don't see any toxic. So ironically, I think this thing gets swallowed by Sapdos if he's not like some weird coil set. So Necrozma is arguably the second most threatening Pokemon this team, because I don't know what it, the thing's gonna do until it's. So it does it, and it'll probably be too late even then. I'm very scared of weakness policy because this thing could just like go in. Maybe we'll have a combine autotomize set with like uh, I don't know, Photon Geyser, <laughs> uh, Earthquake. Something I was kind of concerned about in prep was something like an SD set. Similar to Age Slash, but I was like, nah, maybe for like maybe maybe like special is like more likely. So yeah, Togekiss, um. Is here and honestly 
Um, I don't think he brings it because I have like almost every Tokus counter imaginable between uh, Delhi, uh, Mia with Synchronize. I mean, if he tries to paralyze me, I'm just gonna synchronize that shit back. Uh, Guitar, Drill, Zapdos. Like, I don't even think he wants to deal with this. Tokus wants to bring brought out, but again, this thing has nice to plot. It has wish support. Um, so I could see this thing being a wish passer. But other than that, I don't know. So Mian Shell, again, this thing can have SD support or SD in general with Choice Band Reckless. Like if I got it's I it, that's the way I see it. Either Choice Band Reckless or like uh SV. And uh yeah. Raikou is also annoying. For me because the, the, well specifically the team I brought because um Unfortunately, spoilers, I don't- I'm not bringing Drill. But, like, this thing could just tear me apart if he doesn't bring- like, if I don't bring, like, a, a ground or a grass type, which... I really much debated with the- with my, uh, team. Because I was pretty much scared about what he has. Uh, what he could bring, in general, and I just felt that maybe he doesn't bring Raikou. But, and if he does bring Raikou, um, Aorus Fear is annoying. Uh, Thunderbolt as well, Shadow Ball, Combine is also really threatening, so. Blastoise is also here, um, again, this thing could just set up if it wants to. So yeah, and then like, if it was Shell Smashes, and that's an also annoying, like, I think, this is like, the third most of worst mon I have to phase off against, so yeah. And last but not least, we have Kangaskhan, which is, uh, be potentially power up punch and whatnot so but anyways let's just go over my team real quick um we have a uh, burp ding the zapdos um and this thing is a uh, pretty interesting since uh our last like the last time i battled him it was this was like all switch this time i'm going to forgo um um i'm actually gonna forgo hp ice and just have discharged u-turn and toxic because I don't really see Hidden Power just helping me out here. Like, Discharge is just nice because I could paralyze stuff. And the Rocky Helmet's amazing just to ensure that like stuff like maybe Kangaskhan, me and Shao get chipped down. And I think the reason he, and I don't and the reason why I for dropped the Bolt Switch and I added Discharge over that is because like I don't want to be in a situation where like uh, all I have is discharge or hidden power just to smack Kangaskhan. And I don't want to be in a situation where I have to bolt switch to something. Where that, that let's say like let's I have to switch into I don't know, Keldeo again on the Kangaskhan. I don't want to be in a situation where I switch first and then Kangaskhan kills me. So yeah. So and of course it has some really good spadef here and there, so Still have for Zapdos. Um, Keldeo is pretty interesting. And this is sort of like like the weirdest set I have, honestly, on out of this entire team. And this thing is um it's just a sub sub taunt, if you ask me. Um I was debating between Combine and Taunt for the longest. And honestly, like I I realized I don't really need to like CM and I figured, you know, Taunt's just better in the long term because uh, Blastoise last game just um, just overpowered Kelzio in that situation and he had potentially Hidden Power Grass or Electric. I think it was Grass, but yeah. Again, like, the, the main goal of this Kelzio set is to be a cleaner anyway, so I, I already have, like, at least two sweepers this game, so I figured, you know what, Kelzio can just, like, Ensure that Blastoise doesn't, you know, get or anything just gets too crazy, and I could just prevent any setup with Taunt. And Substitute's just there because, you know, it allows me to give me an extra decoy, an extra turn or two, so that way he has to take it his time to uh, go to Substitute as I attack him again. So, of course, Leftovers is there because, you know, sub Leftovers. Kind of a nice. I don't know, I think we've all seen Leftover sub for a long time now, so... Um... I, like I said, like, uh, sub is just... Just there to block any toxic or 
any random talk. I think this was mostly for AG, so... So, yeah. Um... And speaking of AG, I brought T-Tar. And, uh... This is kind of an interesting set. Um, because... For one, I did not consider bringing T-Tar. This is actually top of Bulu. I forgot the... Uh, I think it was like a, a weird... Assault Fest set for Bulu, but then I realized... Like... It was between Bulu, Entei, and Titar. Whether or not I wanted to bring, like, one or the other, and and basically, like with Bulu, I think I was able to check, like, most of his team, but I realized that Aegislash and Necrozma just becomes annoying to deal with, and I realized that Titar was like absolutely necessary, and and this set's kind of weird. Well, because it is a rocker plus dragon dance set. Because rock blast plus crunch is all I need just to, to overpower his team in a way. Of course, like Man Shao kind of walls this if he's like max defense in some weird fashion. But if you think about it, um, when's the count? It's not going to do much to me. And if he's, an, if he's prankster, he technically can't like. Encore lock me or stun spore me. He could tailwind. But like he can't just block me since I'm a dark type and you know how Prankster got nerfed against Dark Type Pokemon. So that's massive for me. And I don't think I, I don't think Mento works on uh, T Tar. So that's why I decided, you know, I'm just gonna drag a dance up. And this is obviously one of my win cons. Um if I could get T Tar set up to plus one or plus two, I think I just and like get some hazards up. I think I just win the game. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Titar. Like it just looks pretty solid here. Uh, next up we have Entei. Um, again, I was debating between Bulu, Titar, Entei, and I figured Entei was better than Bulu, <laughs> just because like I realized how I need a priority and. I guess this side is pretty much like what was like left, <laughs> literally left over of the original team, and I literally have a leftovers Entei right there. So, but again, like leftovers Entei just helps me just get get lost HP back. And uh, again, it, this is sort of a, the same Entei sets I've kind of brought more of it less, like with Howl, Sacred Fire, Flare Blitz, E Speed. I think I, that's all I need in terms of like coverage. Um. Sacred Fire is just for these Age of Science so I don't make contact and just burn stuff. War Blitz is for that extra oomph if I need that damage output. But yeah, like I also went for not for the uh like add up in nature just because uh I could have went Jolly just to outspeed like Hydreigon and maybe have a chance to get like some chip with like War Blitz, but I was like, you know, I'll just get I'll just go for E Speed instead. And I want that extra damage output against Aegislash, against an E speed damage on Necrozma if it's like a weird fast set. So, yeah. Then you have a uh, Mew, which I think this is almost the same as the Mew that I brought from like finals in this order, or in like EPL season 4, but the only difference is that it has spikes. And I'm kind of like annoyed with the. Uh, or paranoid with this team in general. The point where I realized, you know, spikes actually kind of fucks him up if he doesn't have defog or rabbit spinner support. And the only two Pokemon that he or four Pokemon he could defog with or rabbit spinner with are Dogekiss, Hydreigon, Whimsicott, and I believe the uh, Blastoise. Now Blastoise can do it if it's defensive, so that's the one possible Pokemon. Whimsicott, I've seen him use it here and there. So that's a possibility. And then Hydreigon is just defog. If he's defog, then that means he's not like he's probably not an anti plot, if you ask me. So yeah. Like the only other set I'm kind of concerned with. Well, as you can see, this set is very spadef because I'm kind of concerned about Raikou. Like this is probably my main check to Raikou. Since if he starts calm minding up, that's I really don't want to... <laughs> that could be game if you ask me so and I also have like uh you know like again this is for also again I also work on Crowsman in a way so 
Um, I could also take a uh, special hits from like Shell Smash Blastoise and try to encore it onto a Shell Smash. I am concerned about like any potential White Herb, or not White Herb, but like a uh, Mental Herb, because Mental Herb will uh, break through encore. So, but again, like if I get able, if I'm able to get spikes plus uh, um, rocks up in this game, I should be able to like do pretty well in the short term, in the long term, so yeah. And lastly we have something, the Celesteela, which is just Spadef. Um, I actually debated between Leftovers and you know, Wakan Berry, and I realized, you know, Leftovers is just really, really... Like, this was like one of those sets where I'm like, you know, I don't really lose much by losing left Leftovers, but at the same time, Conberry just gave me an extra insurance against uh, Raikou if he brought it. Because Raikou, like for like for, for all, what I have here for this team, like can just rip me apart if he has like Aura Sphere, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Calmine. So Deli also helps wall some of his mons here and there. It can deal with Blastoise a bit if it's Shell Smashed, and like I I'll, I could potentially stall it out, but I don't know. Necrozma also deals with physical Necrozma, and I actually tried swapping out Selly for Bulu, but I realized that physical Necrozma just destroys this team, like with that set. So I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna add this guy back in. So yeah, that's the team, and we'll just go into the battle. So all right, so we're back. So. Alright, so for those of you who skipped the video, um, I actually go over like the, I went over my team, like, already from the initial part of the video, the initial part of like the, the battle breakdown, so, um, I'll just do a brief rundown, so I have like U-Turn, Zapdos, so uh, Subtox, uh, Sub, uh, Font, Keldeo, Rocks plus DD, Titar, Howl, Howl, Leftovers, Entei, Bikes Mew and uh, Leftovers uh, Wakan Berry Silly. So, so in terms of the team he brought, he brought he has uh, a Dragon, Aegislash, Sandaconda, Raikou, Blastoise, and the Minsha. So, um, right off the bat, like I'm kind of like concerned. Like he didn't bring Necrozma or Kangaskhan. He actually swapped them out for Minsha and uh, Sandaconda. So. I guess he wanted a more reliable rocker and checked with my sand mode so especially with the mage out like right there like that's also a concern to me so Raikou is also like another like I think I think he brought like I don't know I, I, he also forgot like when he got for Raikou so that's kind of annoying um so and of course the blast ice there kind of implies that he might be like shell smash or could be like a defensive set because almost every one of his mods could just be defensive or offensive in my, in my opinion. Maybe except for Aegislash and, and the Sandaconda, but we'll see. So. so in terms of lead, I think Zapdos is probably my best lead. Because I could just like get a good matchup or uh, pivot out or just discharge immediately on, on something. So I'm just going to leave with Zapdos. He goes into Hydreigon and not surprised by that. So I'm going to have to go... So right off the bat, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go for a U-turn and hope he doesn't flinch me down with Dark Pulse, or just sets up immediately. So he's going to go for the Dark Pulse, and I get some good U-turn trip, and I go into Keldeo. So, and here he's going to go into Raikou, at hard, and I'm going to go for sub, anticipating a possible switch out. I didn't actually anticipate he switch, him switching out to, like, uh, Raikou this early in the game, but, um, like... Of course, like, um, like this Raikou could just go for Bolt Switch here, or just break my sub, but, like, I'm anticipating him just to go for the Bolt Switch, just so he just preserves his uh, HP, so, um, the fact that he's, like, colored means that he could be at Aura Sphere, so, I'm gonna go for Secret Sword, as I actually go a good chunk to Raikou, and he's left over, so this kind of implies this thing is, uh, this thing is indeed, um, you know, Combine. Or, I don't know, make it be sub toxic. Alright, so we're back. Um, 
I just have to get something like uh, I forgot to like uh, note down something so for this game so. So we're back against uh, Keldeo versus uh, Raikou. So of course I have to switch out here. I have to switch out hard into uh, Mew. I can go hard T-Tar, but I don't want to risk him going for a Respear. Um, here he goes for the Thunderbolt as um, I'm just going to be able to recover up a little bit. He actually goes hard Aegislash as I'm going to go for a Spike here because honestly, other than Hydreigon, every one of his teams is going to get worn down by Spikes. So that's going to be massive if I get this chip down. like. Uh, if I'm able to chip down his Aegis Slash and his his Syndiconda, his like Blastoise. So yeah. Um, well right now like this uh, I, I'm sort of debating whether to go to Titar or Selly here, and I'm gonna go for Celestilla as he's gonna go for the SD. So I'm like, oh shit, and he's gonna go for another one, and I'm gonna go for Lead Seed here because. I did not want him to, pro like, I didn't go want to go for Earthquake just yet, because if he had Autonomize, like, um, at the very least, I could, like, you know, figure, suspect that this thing is, uh, you know, faster than me. And, uh, I think at this point, like, Deli's gonna go down. Like, if he has Life Orb, it's gonna go down and drop to this, uh, sh to like CC or Shadow Call, but at least he doesn't have like a speed raise. So, um, here actually there's attack immediately as he goes for the Shadow Claw, as he is indeed Life Orb. So, I'm gonna go into Rock Thing, and I should be able to outspeed this thing like uh, this Aegis Slash, um, after I make it evolve. So, um, of course, I'm not gonna play around with this thing, so I'm gonna go for the Crunch as he goes for the uh, Shadow Sneak and as I just go for the crunch and knock out the AG. So here's gonna go into Manchow and and take some spikes. Yep. And right now I'm thinking to myself, well I gotta go hard Zapdos. So and now and looking at the battle, I think if I can get up like hazards like remember rocks and spikes, this could go in my favor pretty quickly, so of course like the only other like you know removal is he has is like Hydreigon, so yeah, um, I, I just gotta get rid of like Hydra, so here he goes for the SD and already this is kind of scary for me because uh, this is kind of, um, he could just go for Stone Edge and just knock me out right off the, right off the bat, so. So, at this point I'm thinking to myself, maybe my best play is just to U-turn, just to go into Entei, and uh, that's that's what I was thinking initially. So, my idea was if he switch, if he's like if he goes for like knockoff or like if he goes for Stone Edge, then I go hard Keldeo. Uh because uh, obviously like like Zapdos dies to Stone Edge, and I'll just go to Keldeo. But if he goes for like uh, let's say uh, um I don't know something it's something crazy like knockoff, I should be able to live. And I get like some chip with U-turn. I could go to Entei or Caldeo. Either way, like um, Entei, I don't want to use it just yet because he still has like a high amount of HP. I think he need to, it needs to be like around the 50s just to revenge killer with E speed. So I don't have like Life Orb or like any boosting, you know, attack or I like boosting items in in general. So so yeah, he actually misses Stone Edge, but. It turns out he's actually Blunder Policy, and as I go to T-Tar, and I'm terrified of this prospect right now, so. And already I'm like terrified about what the hell this thing has in store for me. And of course, this thing could just sweep me right now, if it, if it can. And I'm looking at myself, and and first of all, I actually took a little bit, oh, a little bit long just to respond to uh make this a, like the switch out to T-Tar because um I actually wanted to bait out the possible like uh wanted to bait out a few extra turns of like life or like oh, wait I don't think he's like he's not life word but I wanted to bait out another turn of like uh sand chip so that way um E speed is a roll to kill the man shall like if it's like worst case scenario for like you know for Entei so 
Um, but at this point, this game literally comes down to a 50-50 in, in this situation. Um, if he wants to win, so... So I'm like thinking to myself, okay, do I just... Like, is he gonna read this and he's gonna attack what's in front of him? Or is, if he, is he gonna go for the uh, Stone Edge and just read the Zapdos? And, uh, yeah, so... This is like sort of like pretty much a make or break turn if you ask me, so... Here I'm gonna go Zapdos as he goes for the st high jump kick and of course he knocks me out but with the rocky helmet I have um, I am able to get him down like below f like around 40% so where ESP can knock him me and Shao out as a revenge kill so at least we're able to threaten this uh, man Shao out and he doesn't have any chillin berry since it's blunder policy so at this point I drag in uh, Blastoise Raikou, anything, anything will take any damage, so obviously he's probably going to switch to Sandaconda, but I have to respect this thing, so I'm going to go for E-Speed. Here he goes to Sandy, and uh, this thing is actually not defensive, and this is going to come into play later, because this is not leftovers as well. Um, so I'm going to go hard Mew, anticipating a, you know, where? Mew's with a high horsepower, and that's, that's a little bit more offensive than usual, so... I'm gonna go for the Roost as he goes to Hydra again. And again, this is another crucial information turn. He goes for the U turn here. As he, I think he anticipated me like switching out to like uh, T Tar. But I decided to stay in, see what he wanted to do. And I think here, I think I'm going for like a uh, nasty plot, or not nasty plot, but like Encore because to lock him into nasty plot because I was very concerned about. Uh, him going for a nasty plot right here in this turn. The fact that he revealed U turn implied gave me a lot of information. Like very likely this is a, uh, um, this is a, uh, uh, this Hydreigon is choice in some fashion, whether it's choice specs, or, so unlike unlikely it is, or choice scarf in this situation. So, um, at this point I'm like thinking to myself, okay, what are you gonna switch into? So. He's gonna go back to Mian Shao, and of course I could kill this Mian Shao right now with the uh, Nightshade, but he's actually in the situation he can actually like uh, just uh, go for knockoff right now and just weaken me for Raiko. And looking at my team, I don't have much for Raiko at all, so so now I have to play around this Mian Shao if I want to get out with a good amount of HP. So I'm kind of concerned about Raikou right now, like despite it being like, you know, weakened, so of course he's going to go for the knockoff and remove my leftovers as I decide, you know, I'm going to go for Roost. Um, I anticipated him to go for knockoff there, <laughs> so I, I know this, that was kind of like a, like, okay, I, I know that could have like bit me in the ass, but I had to take the end just to revenge kill him, so, and also uh, Keldeo, so. Here I'm gonna go for another Nightshade as he switched out Bien Shao, which is pretty interesting to me. Since uh Um at this point I just got a lot of chip on Hydreigon. And that's pretty massive to me, so So Hydreigon's getting chipped down and Bien Shao is pretty weakened, so E speed Entei looks pretty nice here. Um like the more I look into it, so and here I'm just gonna go hard T Tar and if he stays in, I'm gonna get sand chip on him. He actually goes for Dark Pulse, and now I realize to myself, if this thing is choiced and doesn't have something like Focus Blast or Superpower, um, I could just set up and just, you know, start sweeping him. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Since, um, I'm going to go for Dragon Dance as you go into Sandaconda, and keep in mind, this thing, I, with E-Speed, this would have done like, maybe like, let me see. He speeds like 23% and based on the damage cost, doesn't, that implies that it's like max HP but not like max defense. So this thing has a chance, solid good chance to like Oko. So I'm just going to go for the crunch and knock out the Sandaconda from the range it is. And now um, he goes for the U-turn again. And I think I, I even did a damage cost here and it turned out that... um. Meteor, like Draco Meteor doesn't Oko me from like, from the initial range I was at, you know, before like, he went for, like, you know, when he went for like the, 
U turn there, so. I thought he was gonna revenge kill me for uh, with Super Power or Focus Blast. But, like. Um, I, I obviously, this was like. If I if there was a turn I could have Dragon Dance, it would have been right here. Because at this point, like, I would have just swept them. Or. Well, it depends on what the Blast does is, but. But yeah, I do, like. In fact, just go for the attack here, and he goes for sack the Mianxiao. And this is my last, uh, no, this is my second to last turn of Stan. As he goes to Raikou. And uh, it, obviously he's trying to like, uh, sack Pokemon just to revenge kill with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the Hydreigon. So, of course Raikou is going to get outsped since I'm Dragon Dance boosted, so. I'm going to go for the Crunch. And yeah, knock out the Raikou. And now it's just Blastoise and Hydreigon versus uh, my four other Mons. And Keldeo looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Um, obviously, I, I, you know, with the fact that we have a plus one speed boost, I forgot to mention this is probably, this is in fact Sidarf, so. So at this point, like, he's gonna have to lock himself into a Draco Meteor, so. That's pretty good. Um, so he's he's locked in. And I assume his last move has to be Fire Blast for, like, Bulu and, uh, Belly. Like, there's just no way, so. So now I can actually go for Nightshade, as he probably sacks his Hydreigon. But he actually switches to Blastoise, and that's pretty massive because he's going to take the Spikes damage and the Nightshade. And here I'm going to go for Encore because I really did not want Blastoise to set up right then and there. And I actually, I, I honestly didn't want to go for the, the Encore there. I just wanted to go for. Nightshade, I, 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 it was like a very weird 50-50 anyway, even though he has a Hydreigon, a full Hydreigon right there, so, um, he could, like, at this point, like, Mew has kind of done its job, but, like, um, since, in a way, like, he's gonna have to lock himself into Dark Pulse or Draco Meteor, so, I could technically roost up if I want to, and just figure out what he wants to do, so, here he's gonna go for the Dark Pulse as... I'm going to roost up, and as I know that this thing is now locked into Dark Pulse. And I could go for Nightshade if I want to, just to ensure that an E-Speed from Entei will definitely knock it out. So, at this point in the game, like, it's just pretty much like, who like, who flinches first in a way. So, I mean, not literally, you know, with Dark Pulse, but you know what I mean. So, here he actually switches out to Blastoise, anticipating my, uh... Anticipating my like my roost again as like I go for nightshade and of course this is this pretty much means the game is over since uh now like Blastoise is like significantly weakened to the point where E speed on um you know Entei will knock him out. So he is indeed like white herb, so I could have encored him in. So I'm just gonna go for the nightshade and knock him out. And out comes Hydreigon and like, unless he flinches me multiple times, um, which is, I don't think it's even possible since I have E-Speed, I all prioritize him. So, Lion Thing is just going to go for E-Speed, as he goes for Dark Pulse, and yeah, um, the game's over. So, GG's to uh, Sammy as we go to finals of Scrabble. Alright, so, um, I kind of got a drop there, towards like the very middle of the end. So I'm gonna redux this uh this like this final part of the video which is like just doing a reflection of what happened and just going over you know the key points of this game. Alright, so to start out like like Titar was a massive like it was a huge addition for this uh matchup. Being able to dragon dance on the scarf uh Hydreigon was massive. Also, revenge killed like you know, Aegislash prevent my team from getting like excelled by that thing is just huge. And again, like Sandaconda being like very low from a very like non defensive was massive as well. Of course, like me and Shao, yeah, that me and Shao set happened. <laughs> like, Blunder policy, me and Shao was like by far the most wide or unexpected set I didn't ex like anticipate like I've seen Mian Shao before run SD but that was like one time I was like well shit <laughs> because if I didn't like 
I think I do agree that the game came down to the Zapdos versus or Hatitar or Zapdos like versus me and Shell turn right there. But like I wanted to like call the double switch or not so because in my opinion if he had like uh I think that game would have been a lot harder in my opinion because that was like a in a way a weird fifty fifty where to stay in with Titar or go hard Zapdos. And of course like I was able to get the the fifty fifty ride since uh like Rocky Helmet I got the Rocky Helmet up on uh the Mian Shao, putting it a range of Entei's E speed, so and that was like eventful. One thing that really helped me out was the spikes. The spike was able to like ensure that like most of his team wasn't like well, most of his team got got chipped in some fashion, even Raiko, Mian Shao, Blastoise, and Santa Conda helped facilitate into a and of course Titar in the end so like again like um this was one of those matchups that I, I, I just knew that if I had to, I had to play my cards right because any one of his mons could just outright sweep me. And of course like I had to play like most of like my mons to like the best of my abilities. Um of course losing to Selly was kind of annoying and uh like and same with Zapdos as well. Like I, I wish I went for the like hard discharge onto the Minshaw. Like I will agree that was a bad play when he has when he has seed up. Or like went for the Stone Edge. Like I should have like uh went for discharge. Like just to get the chance to like if since I'm I am sacking Zapdos, like I might as well just kill the uh the uh Mianshao. But then again, how do you expect like blunder policy and of all things? It's one of those sets where, like, if you get it off, it's just, it's over. the game's over. Like, unless you just play around. Like, for me, I had a one, like, my one out, which was, I had to play around that. So, but yeah, it was indeed a 50-50 in terms of, like, who won that game. Um, And I think, yeah, like, I think that just goes to show how, like, good, like, Sammy is. Um, So, yeah, GG's to Sam. And uh, we are... Basically going uh, into finals of this uh, randomized uh, league, so and it's kind of a weird finals matchup since uh, we're battling Jace, who I actually battled him in a finer, in another finals of a lo this uh, pre uh, deal well pre like Gallard or pre like Pokemon Home decks uh, league, <laughs> so it's just like and. I'll, I'll just go over that game like when I get the chance to, but yeah, that's gonna be like a matchup to like a watch and prep for. So, so, anyways, uh, I have all that's all I have to say for this uh video, and uh, yeah, wash your hands, and I'll see ya.